Praise the Lord for another beautiful day that the Lord has made. David said it like this. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day to be a witness for the Lord. Amen. I was thanking for another day that he lets me rise up. Amen. Let's me be a witness for him. Amen. I pray that all is well with you today. So I'd like to talk a little bit today about putting on the whole armor of God. Amen. If you'll go with me to the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Yeah, I like for people to follow along with me in the Bible. Because, you know, sometimes we might misread a word or something. And you can call my attention to it. Amen. But, you know, his word is powerful. His word is life. Amen. Father, we come to you today thanking you, Lord, for another beautiful day. Lord, that we might speak about the love of Jesus to some lost soul. Lord, prepare our hearts. May it be good ground for the word to fall into and to spring forth and bring forth much good fruit. May our ears be open to what the Spirit has to say. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Amen. Vision 6 says this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So children, listen, listen up right now. Honor your father and mother. For this is the first commandment with a promise. That it may be well with thee. And thou mayest live long on the earth. And your fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. And with fear and trembling in the singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as the to the Lord and not to men. In other words, whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. You know, we all have jobs to do. And it may not be the very job that you'd like to do at that time. But do it heartily as unto Christ. Amen. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And your masters do the same things unto them. Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is their respect of persons with them. But listen to what he says next. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of of his might. Now he's speaking to the born again children of God. Amen. Be strong. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
is to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. In other words, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the evil one. The sly one knows our weaknesses and he'll pick and pluck and punch and, and gouge and go on at them daily. If our weakness is gossip, oh, he'll give you something to gossip about. And it'll be such good stuff that he, that he wants you to spread. Amen. If that's your weaknesses, that's where he'll pluck at you the most. That's where he will gouge at you. See, the only inroad the enemy has to us is our mind. So that's why we need to guard our mind. Amen. Peter said it this way, to gird up the loins of your mind. Amen. The 12th verse says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, the wicked spirits. Amen. If we could see in the spirit, really, if we could see in the spirit, it would it would knock the stocks off our feet. The things that we would see that's going on in the heavenlies. Because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against our parents. We're not fighting against our sisters and brothers or our nieces and nephews or whoever. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Now, flesh and blood can be used of the devil. But we got to realize who the enemy is. It's not that person. Amen? That's why we have to put on the whole armor of God. Amen? For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the darkness of this world. That's what we're wrestling against. Amen? He said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may... Be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We're living in the evil days. Amen. We're surrounded by evil. We're surrounded by darkness. We're surrounded by the things of the enemy that's coming at us. Trying to provoke us. Trying to get us off course trying to get us out back out into the world to turn away from the things of God and be afraid, amen, get in our shell and get in a corner somewhere and cover our head and say, I can't do this anymore. But God said, Whew, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He also said, he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So who are we to fear? Amen. We're not to fear God. We're not to fear people. Amen. When we put on the whole armor of God, then we can withstand these things in the evil days. Amen. He said, stand Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, which means right standing with God. John 14 and 6 says this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. When we know who God is, when we know that Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost, 
and he says he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, then who do we turn to? We turn to the life giver. Amen? We stand firm and hold our ground knowing the one that you have placed your trust in, which is Jesus. Whew, he goes with me. He sustains me. He provides for me. He is my anchor. If I'm in, in the storms, he's right there with me. He goes through the storms with me. He went with the three Hebrew children in the fire, didn't he? He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way, even to the end. John 8 and 32 also says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. That's Jesus. You say, well, I know him, but, 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 but. See, we know of him. Do we know him, truly know him? Do we know that he will sustain us? Do we know that he is our rock? Do we know he is our shield and our buckler? Do we know that we abide under the shadow of his wings? Amen? Do we really know him? See, that's where he said, have your loins girded about with truth. We've got to get to know him intimately. Amen? To know his voice when he speaks to us. To know what he would have us to do. To know his word. To lead and guide us. No matter what situation that we're in. Amen. Do we really know him? He is the truth. Amen. And the breastplate of righteousness. That's right standing with God. That's being in obedience with God. To his word. Being obedience to his commandments. Amen. He said, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, prepare, make ready, stay at peace with everyone that's possible. Stay at peace with the Lord. Don't have a rebellious spirit, but have a willing spirit, a spirit that's always praising and worshiping the Lord. Prepare. Make ready. Amen. He says, and above all, listen to me, above all, taking the shield of faith, mm, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith, which is the truth, the assurance, the belief, the confidence, the trust, and firm persuasion knowing the truth knowing Jesus knowing he's there knowing that he will go with us whatever battle we might be in amen and then he says and take the helmet of salvation mm -hmm. and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God children we've got a lot of people walking around with just the helmet of salvation on reminds me of a little child that I just put on a shirt or just their diaper have their diaper on running around oh they're at peace they're having fun they're laughing I mean, you know, and the grown-ups laugh, and, and, and it's so beautiful to see a child do that. But when we grow up, amen, and we just get on that helmet of salvation, 
And I've heard people say this. Well, now I'm saved. I can go to heaven now. That's all that matters. I can just sit back and relax now. Now, that's not what the Word says. Amen? Faith brings forth works. Amen? But works without faith is dead. When I came to the Lord, my want to changed. I wanted to be pleasing unto Jesus. I wanted to do what he would have me to do. And see, I loved everyone. Those that I felt was my enemies that had come against me so strong. I loved them in spite of. He says, how do you know that you, that you pass from death unto life? In other words, you've been born again. He said this. He said, because you love the brethren. Amen. I might not always agree, but that don't make me your enemy. Amen. We may not agree on everything, but that don't make us an enemy. But if we can agree on Jesus Christ being born of a virgin, Taking the stripes for our healing. Dying on the cross for our sins. Was put in that tomb and was there three days and nights. But he rose again on that third and appointed morning. And he is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Then we can agree. Amen. Because it takes the blood of Jesus to redeem us back and to the Father. Amen. To reconcile us back. What a price he paid for us. Amen. But taking that shield of faith. Keeping that shield of faith. Hallelujah. He said above all. Taking that shield of faith. Mm. Are you hearing me? Take that shield of faith. That means you're trusting. Trusting in the word of God. Being reassured. Being confident. Having a firm persuasion. Amen. Take that helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Get that Word in you so deep that nothing can pluck it out. That every time when the devil comes by with some thing that he's trying to pull you away, you say, no, devil, it is written. It's time that we know who we are in Christ. Amen? It's time. He says, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. You know when the young men, the young women join the military, first thing they do is let them know who's boss. Amen. <laughs> but they issue them a uniform. And every bit of the uniform has a purpose. They show them how to do the things they need to do in their armor. They show them 
teach them every aspect of their weapons, how to take it apart and put it back together even in the dark. See, Jesus is trying to show us that no matter how dark the situation may be, no matter what's coming our way, no matter what kind of storms is coming our way, no matter what the enemy is throwing at us, no matter the persecutions is coming at us, he's trying to show us that whenever we've got our loins girded about with truth. And what is the truth? It's Jesus. Amen. When we are girded about with the truth. We've got to learn the word of God. We've got to learn what is wrong and what is right. Amen. When we have Jesus teaching us, anytime you're a soldier, you got to be taught. When we are born into the kingdom of God, we're automatically in the army of God. Amen? But we are taught. He teaches us. He sent the Holy Ghost back to teach us in all truth and righteousness, in all paths that we take. His word is a light unto our feet and a light unto our paths. How can we go wrong but not heeding? The unction of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever started to do something and something inside you go, mm, mm, no, mm, no, no, mm, 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 no, no. But yet we go ahead. Oh, and somebody is with us or something. Oh, it's okay, just this one time. When we know on the inside that Holy Spirit has given us the unction that, no, we should not be doing that. But let's get in right standing with God. Let's be led by the Holy Spirit. Let's go down the path that he's leading us, not the path that we choose. Amen. You say, well, the grass is greener on that side. Mm-mm. No. It's where God has planted you. Amen. It's where he has called you. It's where he has set you in a position for you to go forth and win souls into the kingdom. Amen. When you get on the whole armor of God and you're walking in his statutes and you're letting Jesus lead you, You're going to see the hand of God move. You're going to see miracles take place. Amen. Because see, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. It's all about what God did and what God does. Amen. I've seen people healed of things that you, you wouldn't even think about. Was it something I did? No. Mm -mm. No, it was the hand of God moving. Amen. I seen a woman that had been in a car wreck. Her back messed up. She couldn't walk straight. She was all bent over. And when we were praying for her, you could feel the bones moving. 
you could hear the bones making noise coming back into place. That's my Lord. That's my Jesus. That is the truth. Amen. And I am firmly convinced that whatever I commit unto him, he is able to keep. When we ask him, it's not his will that any perish. It's not his will that we walk in sickness. It's not his will that we lay flat of our back. He came, he suffered, and he died for us. He took the stripes for our healing. He said, ask and it shall be given you. Not maybe. He said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receives. And he that seeketh finds. And he that knocketh it shall be opened. God wants to give us good things. He said, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give us to all men liberally and upbraid us not, and it shall be given unto him. People say, well, God puts that sickness on me. He put cancer on me to show me. Something. No, 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 no. When we see that or even think that or say that, it's like a slap in the face of God. Jesus took the stripes for our healing. Sicknesses comes from the evil one. When I had cancer of the esophagus back in the early 90s, I didn't blame God. But I went to the scriptures and I started reading every scripture about healing. They painted a dreary picture. But see, God had other plans. See, when I got that whole armor of God on, and I started seeking the truth, having my loins girded about with the truth. I was healed. That dreary picture faded. Amen. And cancer free. Praise the Lord. I know the truth and the truth set me free. Amen. He took the stripes from our healing. He shed his blood, his life's blood, to give us life eternal. Amen. And he sent the Holy Spirit, like just the Holy Ghost, to lead us and guide us. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior we serve. He is I couldn't do without him. He is my everything. He is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Oh, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He is a wonderful Savior. And you can get to know him today. All you've got to do is call out to him. He said he would not cast no one away. Amen. My whole heart's desire is that you know Jesus. Because he is the truth, the way, and the life. Let's put on the whole armor of God. Let's get to know Jesus. And let's walk with him. Because he said, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Amen.
He said his burdens were light and his yoke is easy. When we walk, we yoked up with Jesus. Oh, what a, what a, I like to call it a lovely walk with Jesus, the highway to glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Lucy Lowe, Post Office Box 133, Grimsley, Tennessee, zip code 38565. My email is lucylow1944 at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you, Lacey. And Jesus loves you more. <laughs>